Welcome to Cinema Savants, your weekly dose of movie news, movie reviews, and the occasional rumor. With your hosts, Todd Vandenberg and Rob Steele. And coming up in this week's show, the list of Oscar nominations. Not the whole thing that would be boring. The list of Razzie nominations. No, that doesn't deserve to be read in its entirety. And the list of remakes that are getting remade without being nominated. But first, <laughs> retaliation for the Star Wars shortening last week. I, I saw this, I think it was Wednesday, and I thought, absolutely brilliant. Last week we mentioned how there was a men's group who decided to remove all the women from Star Wars The Last Jedi. And it cut it down to about a 45-minute movie. This week, retaliation has kicked in. <clears throat> and in order to retaliate, or just to show how stupid an idea it was, there is now a men-free edition of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> All um, right, then. It clocks in with a massive runtime of two and a half minutes. I was going to say, it's, it's the family. It, it cuts all the men out. Um, <clears throat> this was followed by a man-free edition of The Shawshank Redemption, which clocks in at a whopping 90 seconds. Nice. I, I like I'm not that. making these up. They are online. You can find them. They're for, you can find them in Twitter feeds. That's how short this is. That's um, pretty brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. I loved it. That's awesome. Because um, cutting women out of Star Wars is just stupid. Well, cutting women out of anything is just stupid. Yeah, it was just stupid because, well, to begin with, none of us would be here. So let's yeah. start with the basics. <clears throat> yeah, the whole – I I don't quite understand the backlash. I was going to describe them as Neand Neanderthals, and, and maybe that's what Neanderthals did. Maybe they cut out the women, and that's why they're no longer with us. That could um, be. But, yeah, I don't really want to insult their intelligence because they actually had a fairly large brain, brain capacity. So I don't think they would be of the type to cut out women. Um yeah, that's a brilliant response. It's just like, okay, look, look how, uh, and I can see this. So, okay, I can see where there wouldn't be a ton of roles for women in a war movie and set in World War II. So, since women, obviously, they went to wars in the role of medics and things like that. Both but, of grandmothers, and, actually. Yeah, excellent. And as. But, you know, the, the point being they're, they're going to be more male-centric, but there's certainly plenty of room for more female roles, even in those films, yes. than two and a half minutes and one and a half minutes. And, and it's just, that's just how society, unfortunately, is. So, excellent response. That's awesome. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, totally brilliant. Uh, the only other Star Wars news I've got this week, and that's where I put this category, because I had nowhere else to put this particular bit. <laughs> uh, the Han Solo movie is going to be released in China, but they're just going to call it Solo. They are not putting the words Star Wars with it. Interesting. Uh, because, uh, as we mentioned last week, Star Wars uh, The Last Jedi lasted two weeks in China because they don't, they never got episodes one through Seven. So it's just, and it just that's still just uh, that just is mind boggling to me that they were so ridiculously stupid to not set to two reasons. They didn't bother to oh let set the climate. Let's say to no, let dude. people know oh this is what the story is about. And why would you bypass the chance to make some extra cash? I kind of think people would have paid money. I don't think they were going to release this for free, right? I would not um, so. If, if nothing else, make a deal and release them on television there. I I just don't get the, just the incredible stupidity of releasing. China's getting a lot of our money anyway. Maybe they just don't need it. Yeah, I just, wow. That's just mind-boggling. It's like, oh, let's let's release the, <laughs> let's release this, I don't, I don't know, the seventh movie in a Leonard series. Leonard Part 6, how well did that go over? Yeah, hmm. pretty well. Yeah, and, uh, and that which is, yeah, yeah. Same uh, that's concept, I think. Only they, they actually did it, and you kind of go, wait, why? Yeah. <clears throat> Don't understand. Um, 
kind Something of a misstep. Something I do understand. Yes. In a sense. Casey Affleck, <clears throat> the one mm-hmm. who gave me all this congestion. I'm blaming him this week. Damn that bastard. Yes, I know. Casey Affleck is not going to be presenting at the Oscars this year. Nope. Uh, because there's apparently a tradition. Whoever wins best best male actor not uh, introduces best female actresses next year, and you yep. can switch that. Uh, yep, he says yep. he's not doing it this year because of uh, sexual misconduct allegations against him. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I get that. Oh, I get that, too. Um, I would probably be happier if he would do more to address the situation other than just not show up and expose him expose himself and i don't mean that as a pun but take it how you want it uh but it's a good pun so it'll do yeah to um more conflict more statements put it that way but you know maybe the time to do that would be when he won last year which he shouldn't have because he frankly didn't deserve it because denzel washington totally kicked everyone's ass in the acting department but that's kind of an aside the time to to do something meaningful would have been to walk up and look at the oscar and say you know i made some mistakes in my past i can't accept this award and then walk off that would have made a bigger statement than oh i won't show up next year (laughs) kind of like kind of like steve Wynn. You know, railing about how all oh, these allegations are baseless, they're untrue, and then six hours, um, maybe eight hours later, resigning from his post as uh, finance chair of the Republican National Committee because, oh, these distractions are going to cause problems. Or you mean the distractions of your eventual trial, pig? Hello. Um, and, and we've talked a lot about, you know, there in too many cases, there hasn't been um, – Justice hasn't actually run its course. It's just been allegations, accusations, boom, you're guilty. But – but when there are dozens and dozens over a period of decades, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, that's a little bit different. So, yeah, it's, Casey Affleck, fine, don't show up. I mean, it's a smart move to not show up, but it would be smarter and more meaningful if you actually did something meaningful instead of just not show up to, to take your beating like you should. I would much prefer him stand up there and get booed. I'll agree. Fitting punishment, almost. Yeah. I mean, it probably needs to be it's more, a, actually, but, you know, it's a start. A start. Exactly. A start. Um, and that's a good way to start our 2018 Oscar nomination segment. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you this, because I know you're much more into the award stuff than I am. Mm-hmm. Didn't Best Picture, used, they used to say, here's the top three or top five movies and that would be it. There's nine Best yeah. Picture nominations. A few years ago, and if Lee had joined us, Lee would probably know off the top of his head, but a few years ago, they upped it to a maximum of 10 because there was backlash from so many films. Because when you just say, oh, there's only five possibilities, they felt that it had kind of reached the same thing as the college football playoffs. Well, surely there are more than four teams that have a chance to be the best team in the country. And they realized, well, there's probably more than five films, which are possibly the best film. So they expanded it to up to, up to 10. That's still ridiculous. Uh, well, let's see. And some of them uh, are still missing. Well, and yeah, that's, that's part of it because in the past films were missing that should have been in the list. And so they've, they've upped it. I don't have any problem with them then upping it to, I mean, 10 is pretty much pushing it. I don't think I would put it more than that. I would not put it more than 10. Then, then you delete the brain power of some of the people voting for this. And, you know, they probably can't handle five, let alone. Well, looking at some of the past winners, they clearly couldn't handle five. So um, I wanted, I, I wanted I, to ask you this before we actually get into the, those best picture nominees, mm-hmm, <clears throat> because there is something missing from all of these nominations because movies that got in and got nominated include Blade Runner 2 049 Star Wars The Last Jedi Guardians of the Galaxy 2 Kong uh, Planet of the Apes part what is this four five seven thousand whatever mm-hmm. all of those got nominations you know, not for best picture but assorted throughout Wonder Woman is not nominated for anything. Now, that's odd to me. 
Uh, just, there's, I'm thinking it, 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 give it a special effects or something. I would put it in best picture because you've only got nine, and you just said there's room for ten. Give it an odd. I, I wouldn't have nominated it for best picture. I don't think it's one of the ten best films. Um, it was a thought. I, I probably would have nominated Ms. Patty for best director, though, even though that's still restricted to five. Uh, it's a really good movie. I don't think it's a great movie. I mean, if I thought it was a great movie, then I would say, oh, it should be part of the 10. I don't think it's a great movie. For that kind of film, though, I mean, it did everything it's supposed to do. And it's a hell of an achievement uh, to resurrect DC's. uh, It certainly didn't have to resurrect DC's um, superhero universe financially, although it did a good job of that, too. But critically, it did. And for with fans, it did. And this is certainly a really good year <laughs> to tell a story about women being empowered, if there ever was a good year for it. So lots of reasons that I can see that she should have been nominated as, as Best Director. Uh, but for it not to get any nods, like not even for cinematography or something, that's pretty bizarre because there are some really great sequences in that film. Uh, I'll agree. Yeah, it, it's really strange that it didn't get a single a single nod. Pretty, pretty weird. I'm, I'm um, very disappointed by that. Yeah. I agree. I, I want to see if you agree with this uh, on this too, <clears throat> because this was a movie that a lot of people liked and it was nominated for a category. I, I completely disagree with Logan mm-hmm. was nominated for best adapted screenplay. Which says to me that the Academy Award people don't read graphic novels either. <clears throat> <laughs> did you really think they did? How no. many? How many? How many people <laughs> that were involved in the nomination do you think read the source material? I, I'm guessing uh, the, for any of these categories, none. Ah, uh, yeah, I was going to say the over under would be two for me. Um, yeah, there's no way they even read that. Yeah. So, so why was it nominated for best adapted screenplay? Well, the, the only reason it. Because they know it's adapted, because it tells them in the credits it's adapted, mm. and they like the screenplay. And I can get that. Wonder Woman was adapted from from, from a – put her in. I I don't think Logan does – I mean, it's cool that a comic book movie gets a serious nomination as opposed to, oh, another special effects nomination. Right. So that's cool. But, I, yeah, I, I, I think they did a terrible job of adapting the screenplay. And again, we've talked about this a few times, has nothing to do that they didn't have the rights to use the Hulk because they didn't have the rights to that character then, Hulk being a key element. Uh, It it easily could have been a major villain within the X-Men universe. It would make zero difference, zero difference whatsoever. And the fact that they changed a... uh, the, the guilty party for a major crime, the fact that they changed that, I thought was a terrible decision. If they had adapted the book as written, that would have been a great movie. That would have made it one of the best films of the year to me. I would have I mean, it's a, it then. <laughs> it's a really good movie. I mean, I like the movie a lot, but the fact that the story is much better the way it's written. Because Logan has a much more interesting character arc if they had just followed the freaking book instead of changing things because oh we don't want to make him look too bad because that's the only freaking reason to change that exactly Uh, hello the guy's an assassin he's been an assassin for his entire career in marvel um he's been a good guy for most of his career too but he's a killer always has been and if you're making an r-rated wolverine movie to to wrap up the story wouldn't this be the time finally to show Wolverine who he to who really, really is. Uh, and in the context of the story, the original story, it wasn't his fault. Nope. But carrying a lot of guilt for it, and that would have made the movie, uh, I don't know, six times better, 80 times better. It would have had a lot more weight to it. It would have been a much better, it would have been a great movie instead of a really good movie. And uh, – to nominate this for adapted screenplay is like this should be nominated for one of the worst freaking adaptations because they screwed up. They, they, they absolutely screwed up some major elements of that story. Well, give it's it an a inter- Razzie. Yeah, Razzie it's an interesting for, story what they yeah. did, but they had a great, great source material and then they didn't use it correctly. No, not at, well, that goes along with any of the X-Men movies. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Anyway. Which is sad because yeah, it's uh, it's pretty stupid that they continue to do that. Anyway, Meanwhile, what what were your uh, big takes from the Oscar nominations? Uh, I like I like the list. Like I've, I have not seen all of the films. I've seen six of the nine, which is at this point in the game is is a pretty good record for me. Um, I can see of the ones I've seen, I can see them all of them being nominated. Uh, we were talking in pre pro. Uh, College Humor put out a list of a pretty funny list of uh, <laughs> true movie posters. True movie posters, and the post is simply called Oscar bait. Um, I just saw the post last night. Totally Oscar bait. Um, <clears throat> Tom Hanks did not get a nomination, and he shouldn't have. He's excellent, but there's not. It's kind of a one note role, not performance, but role. So there's not that much for him to do. <clears throat> on as far as Tom Hanks is doing, I mean, no one is going to look at this and think, "Wow, he's." This is better than he was in Philadelphia. It's like not even close, but it's just, that's the role. <laughs> right. Um, Meryl Streep is nominated again because she got a because paycheck for appearing in a movie. Exactly. There is no earthly freaking reason for her to have been nominated for best actress in this film. Again, has nothing to do with Meryl Streep. It's the role she has. It's an interesting character, but it's not a great character, not as portrayed in this movie. Um, you want me to get into it a little more at this point or Go move on it. to? Okay. I really like the movie. I mean, I did. It's a really good movie. I don't think it's the best movie. Uh, is it one of the nine best? It's, it's, yeah, I'd say it's, it's certainly one of the nine best I saw last year, including tons that aren't on this list. It tells an incredibly important story right now because it's about a kind of a powerful administration, namely the presidency fighting back against the freedom of the press. I mean, could hardly be more timely, which is exactly why Spielberg made this movie. It's a not-so-subtle message uh, to people who are railing about fake news. Uh, for those Whoever who don't know... could you be referring to? Hmm. Yeah. For those who don't know, it's about the release of the Pentagon Papers, which happened back in the 70s. <clears throat> and I'm sure a lot of people don't realize the story. Basically, there was a whistleblower who released a study that had been commissioned by the Secretary of Defense about everything that the government had known, written, said about the Vietnam War. And it went all the way back to Truman. And basically the gist of it was, we can't win this war. And he was kind of upset that we were continuing to fight this war years after everyone admitted we couldn't win it. And the main reason it was given in one particular description was 70% of the reason that we wanted, needed to keep fighting is just to save face so we wouldn't look bad. And as I was telling a friend of mine last night, uh, as Bill Murray famously said in Stripes, we're 10 and 1. It's like, it's still a good record. They could have been fine just getting out instead of worrying about peace with honor, as Nixon proclaimed, and all that other BS. Anyway, so it's about the fight of the press versus the presidency of the United States. Um, and Catherine Graham was the publisher of the Post and basically inherited the role when her husband, who had been the publisher, died, and she was thrust into this. So it's about freedom of the press versus the government. Also, it's about the empowerment of women, because constantly through the film, she's just kind of, they try to shunt her aside because, oh, she's a woman, she doesn't know what's going on kind of stuff. And she just kind of takes it and takes it and takes it, and finally there's a scene where she fights back. But it's it's a great scene, but it's not overly dramatic. I mean, it shouldn't be, but again, it's just in the context of the film, it perfectly works, but it's not a breakout performance by any means, which would be pretty hard when you're Meryl Streep, obviously. I was to say, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's just, it's such an easy role for her. I mean, it's, it's very well acted, but she, there was no way she had to challenge herself for this. None. And then granted, I'm not sure what it takes for Meryl Streep to, to challenge herself, but what other actresses had to do in their films much stronger work than what she was required to do in the post. That's all I'm saying. There's nothing to do with her. It has to do with the role. There is one scene, though, towards the end of the film, where she's walking down some steps, and there's just a sea of women that she's walking through, and they're all looking at her with admiration for standing up to the, the society, basically. Uh, that's a great scene, except it's just, it's so, it's Oscar bait, 
It's like, oh, I'm going to film this scene where all these women, for no freaking reason, they're only women in this one particular part of the steps, and she chooses to walk through this group of women. It's because randomly. those are all the women who were cut out of the Star Wars version. Yeah, and they I mean, it's a cool somewhere. scene, but to me, it's so it's so freaking artificial. It's just as like, well, I'm going to throw this in so people can feel how empowered all these women feel from her. It's like they're. they're could have been a better way to do that mr spielberg yeah like like he should take directing tips from me obviously that's st- stupid but that <laughs> seemed kind of false to me that didn't really quite work it was just it was such an obvious setup and there was no way for it to be and, and it wasn't like okay the women have to stand over here uh, it, it just happened and it was pretty odd that it happened the way it did because they didn't expect her to walk down that it wasn't like they were all waiting for her they just happened to be there Anyway, overall, it's a really, really good movie. I really enjoyed it. But Best Picture? Sure. Uh, Best Actress nomination for her? No. And if she wins, I will be almost as pissed off as I was last year when Denzel didn't win Best Actor. Well, who would who would get Lead Actress for you then? Because uh, she's up against, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce it, Sauri's Ronan for Lady Bird. Margaret Sersha. <clears throat> Pardon? Sersha. Sersha Ronan. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, okay. Sersha. Sersha Ronan, uh, Margot Robbie for I, Tanya, Francis McDormand for Three Billboards, and Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water. I, I haven't seen I, Tanya yet. Um, or, as College Humor put it, I, Margot. I totally deserve something better than Suicide Squad. Um, <laughs> and that is their poster, which is yes. awesome. I love that poster. So I haven't seen that yet, so I can't say whether she should win or not. Um I did see the others. Like Shape of Water, Sally Hawkins is great. I mean, she really is. Absolutely deserves the nomination. If she wins, that's cool. I, I'm still torn between whether it should be Frances McDormand in Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Mississippi, because she's fantastic. Missouri. Whatever. Same thing. It's one of those Actually, M states in the middle. Yeah, no, it's, I know. It's, 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 yeah. Anyway, that's a terrible thing to say. I apologize. And, <laughs> and Miss Ronan. In Lady Bird, because she is awesome also. Uh, unlike Meryl Streep in The Post, they were really stretched in in, in those movies. Um, I I kind of go with with McDormand on this. I, I because to me it's a it's a harder role. Oh, uh, she's dealing. With, I'm not sure if it would be a harder role, but it's certainly a, a really difficult role. But one of the things that stood out to me is just her physical appearance. Because actresses, and it's getting better in Hollywood, because, but, but typically it seems like unless your name is Meryl Streep, if you're over 35, you're in trouble. By yeah. the time you're in 40, you're really in trouble. And it's definitely getting better. Like Frances McDormand, for instance. Uh, Jessica Lange. I mean, more and more actresses, they're getting decent roles uh, in, into what would be, uh, if they were actors, male actors, would be just hitting their prime as opposed to retirement age. So, but she does not look particularly great in this film. She looks like an average, not she, she looks terrible. She just, she looks like an average person. And it's not that often that you see actresses just look like, like regular human? people. Exactly. Yeah. And she was said, either she said, or she agreed, whichever, but this is what the role needs. And that's what she went with. That's pretty brave. Even now, I think. So yeah. to me, she we, we gets a little bit of extra credit for that and and she's a fantastic actress and it's a great role and and again if if sally hawkins wins for the shape of water i'll be fine if sarah ronan wins for lady bird i'll be more than fine um but i really i honestly i I guess if i actually had a vote which would be probably a mistake a criminal mistake someone would go to jail (laughs) for that not just me uh mcdormand should win but if you ask me two hours later, uh, I could very well say uh, Sarah Shea Ronan. But definitely not. Two hours people. later is enough time to see I, Tanya. So it could be Margot Yeah, exactly. And it, could, and it certainly could be Margot Robbie. Because I mean, she has done some some really, really good work in the past, which, which is cool. Yeah. How about lead actor? Where we've got Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis for The Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out, Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour, and Denzel Washington for, I'm sorry, it's still a weird name for me, Roman J. <laughs> Israel Esquire. It is a weird title. Um, L.S. Preston. What? I've only seen one of, of those movies. 
uh, Get Out. Uh, he does a great job in that, honestly. Uh, and I may get a chance to to catch uh, Oldman. I may get a chance to catch a, two or three of the others. I, I would just vote for Denzel because I've he never seen him turn in the. And exactly, it's payback for not getting it last year. And it wouldn't be the first time that the Academy Awards has uh, given someone payback for screwing up in the past. Um, from the clips I saw, he's fantastic. And, and come on, well, it's Denzel. When is he not? Exactly, it's Denzel. And it's like, it's, he's, it's like Meryl Streep. The question is, does this role push him that much? I, I really doubt that it pushes him like Fences did, because that was freaking amazing. That's why I was so pissed, because to me, that's the best performance he's ever given. Absolutely the best. And that encompasses some incredible work. So when he didn't win, it's like, oh my God, that's just awful. So I would love to see him win this time. I would love to see him win this time. Uh, overall, it really seems like it's either going to be him or Oldman, and I think Oldman probably has the... And, and Oldman is deserving numerous times in the past because, again, an awesome actor. How about Best Pitcher? Best Picture. Why did that thing pop up? Um, Damn you, pop-up windows. It's. I have a feeling it's going to be three billboards because it kind of hits all the check marks for what the Oscars like. Um, I think Dunkirk and Darkest Hour are going to cancel each other out because. Oh, which Dunk? Which Dunkirk movie did you vote for? Did you vote for the one on the scene or behind the scenes? And people are going to get confused. Right. Um, Get Out, I think, is too out there and unusual. Um, and I don't think it was the best picture last year. I really, really liked it. Although I think it was out of all of these, I think it's the one that made the most money. Mm, probably. Probably. I think Dunkirk might have come close. It's certainly the one that made the most profit. Right. Because Jordan Peele made it for like eighteen dollars and change or something. I mean, I mean, has actually had a decent budget, but yeah. <laughs> actually, you mentioned it's Jordan Peele. Profit. His his news this week is he's retired from acting to focus on directing. I was trying to figure out how to fit that into the show, and I'm like, I hope he mentions him so I can throw uh, that in. Oh, he'll come back. Oh, I'm sure oh. he will. He'll he'll come back. I mean, my, he can't he can't retire from acting. Jeez. I mean, I'm glad that he's going <laughs> to. I'm glad. Seems like that, doesn't it? I'm glad he's uh, focusing on directing because that's awesome news. He's but, very good at it. Yeah, he he needs to keep on working. I mean, Get Out is just a weird, almost uncategorizable movie. I mean, it's not a horror film to me. And that's what most people put under, but it's it, it, it's a. I think it's because uh, it was creepy enough. Yeah, it's a horror thriller, dark comedy, satire action piece. I mean, it's a really strange movie and that's exactly what he wanted to do. And it works on all those levels, which is why it's nominated, why it might win, but I, I don't think it will. Yeah. Um, and three billboards is a, is a message movie has great performances. Um, you know, three people are nominated. The, the three lead characters are all nominated for their performances. So I think it's one going to wind up being three billboards. Um, but I would be, I would be really thrilled to see the shape of water win too. Because it's a weird, weird movie, and like Get Out, it, it it does exactly what he set out to do. I'll agree with you, for lack of seeing a lot of these other movies, but I will agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, unfortunately, I have seen more of the nominations for worst picture. <laughs> in, in the Razzie movies, I, I may have too. Um. <clears throat> the Razzies were also the, the the nominations were also released this week. The Transformers, go figure, leads with nine nominations. Well, thank God I did not see that, uh, including Worst Picture. Yeah, I'll, I haven't either. Uh, but I saw the the list of Worst Picture, and there's only five. Um, Old school. And one I think doesn't <laughs> fit. Really? Because the, okay. the nominations for Worst Picture are Baywatch, duh, the Emoji Movie, which is as far as I'm concerned, the odds on favorite 50 shades, darker transformers, the last night and the mummy. Hmm. Now for me, the, the I've, I've seen the mummy mm -hmm. uh, twice actually. And I realize it was probably the most disappointing movie because it killed off. I think the entire dark universal reboot <laughs> of right. all the old monster movies. Exactly. But I don't think it was horrible enough 
to be put on a, a worst picture list because it wasn't it wasn't hideous. It just didn't live up to its hype. I'm wondering why that's on the list and not something like, oh, let's say Chips. Yeah. Which just the trailer enough was was enough to make me nauseous. So, yeah. Wh- Do you think The Mummy should have been a worst picture? Well, I haven't seen it, but okay. uh, just even just from the trailer, obviously from what you're saying, from the reviews, there's there's no way that it should be one of the f- five worst films. Because like you said, there were you can put Tom Hanks on or Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise on worst actor list. That's fine, <laughs> but you know that there were there were there were lots of terrible movies last year, yes. uh, and and exactly like you said, uh, the Mummy. It's like you said, it might be the most disappointing, but I'm looking at, oh, let's look at IMDb. Okay, the the third worst rated, third worst rated uh, film on Metascore is Fifty Shades Darker. What about Power Rangers? That was kind of disappointing because does mm-hmm. anybody even remember when that freaking thing even opened? Uh, wow. March? What? Question mark? Rings. Rings was awful. I saw Rings. <laughs> that movie was was utter garbage um the circle haven't seen the circle even though it's been free for like six weeks now on amazon prime i have in um you had said oh yeah i remember before you were talking about it um it it, it wasn't hideous but it you know it's oh this is where tom hanks comes in okay um it, it wasn't a hideous movie but you know i don't think it would be nominated for worst picture you know, Geostorm. There's another one. I mean, there were lots of there were really, a lot of bad movies. A lot of bad movies, and for them to jump, going in style, just the clips for going in style looked freaking terrible. Um, man, they're just they were a crapload of bad movies last year. There so, was... yeah, I, I really don't see putting the Mummy in in that category. No. Like you said. One of the five biggest disappointments. Oh, absolutely! Like absolutely, you said, it, it, it might killed even be off at the top of the list. Yeah, it killed off what possibly could have been three, four, five billion dollars worth of revenue down the line. It, it, yeah, that, that kind of hurts. But worst movie. Damn you, Tom Cruise. No, I don't. It's not Tom Cruise's fault. It was the script. Um, oh, Ghost, Ghost in the Shell. Wouldn't you put that ahead of the Mummy? I know oh, you would. Oh, son of a bitch! How did I not put that on the list? <laughs> It's one of those things. I've done the same thing. Is like we talk about something, and then it's like, oh my god, I forgot. Yeah, I, uh, so. I'm actually just finished watching the TV series again yesterday because the TV series is awesome, and to to make a movie like that where they just go, okay, we can make this iconic looking scene from the from the TV show or the original anime or the graphic novels, and then yeah. have it. Com- you know, she's standing here because it looks good, not because there's actual context for it. You know, and mm-hmm. oh no, don't do that. Bad idea. Although Scarlett Johansson looks spectacular everywhere she wants to be, anyway. But no. Um, one of the other Razzie not com- One of the other Razzie categories. I'll get that word out eventually. Um. <laughs> Worst on-screen combo. Oh, nice. Which I, I like this category. Um, and the top three were... Well, actually, one I don't think needed to be there. Johnny Depp and his worn-out drunk pirate routine. That's not um, a combo. That, that's not really... It, it's Johnny Depp. Um, and it's Pirates of the Caribbean. That's what the character is. So, of course, he's a drunk right. pirate. Hello. Right. And Mission I haven't accomplished. Finished. But did you not say that that was the best film in the series since the first one? Right. And a lot best of, people, of the entire series because it tied everything up and, hey, we're done now. Stop pre- making them. And pretty much everyone has said that. So that's yeah. not a particularly good nomination. Um, <laughs> Rest of that, Razzie. The, the other, the top two, I suppose, in worst on-screen combo. <laughs> <clears throat> Any combination of two characters, two sex toys, or two sexual positions in Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> wow um, that's, that's one way of putting it those movies look very unappealing to me and not because of the subject matter it's just they 
don't look appealing. They don't look like there's, it looks like there's zero chemistry between the actors. Um, I've heard. And it just, I mean, just in the clips, I mean, do they look like they are having anything other than a business meeting at any point? (laughs) It's just, it just looks boring as hell. Anyway, I totally Um, see that. But the worst on screen combo any two things in the emoji movie. (laughs) Wow. They they really did not like that film. No, it, it, it's in every category. Almost it makes really me want to watch it just to see if it's really that terrible. Because I did watch a movie that I expected to be terrible, and it wasn't. Uh-oh. And we'll, we'll get to that at some point. But okay, yeah, that makes me want to see the Moji movie and just see is like okay to fulfill our motto: we watch movies so you don't have to. Yeah. Although I don't think I don't think anyone is watching that movie except the lucky people in Saudi Arabia. Oh, poor people in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, really. Um, moving on to other movie news, of which there is quite a bit this week. Uh, there's a movie that is going to be made that I see being on the Razzie list someday. <laughs> Lovely. John Cena, and right there alone should put it on the list, uh, is in talks to play Duke Nukem. <laughs> So much for the PG era of the WWE. Are you familiar with Duke Nukem, the video game series? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello. The, I, I've I, only played a demo of it. I can totally see. I ended see. up in a strip bar. Yeah, I can totally <laughs> see him playing Duke Nukem easily. I mean, because it doesn't probably require tons of acting talent. Uh, and, and he's personable, and he, he does his promos well, which, of course, that's acting. You know, he's... He certainly will be serviceable. I mean, I, how many he's done? I think what three or four movies now so far. So he's been. No, he's, he's been done movies. quite a few. I think he's done like ten. Wow. Okay. Well, thankfully, I've missed most of those or all of them. Well, yeah. But I, I think that's awesome. He he looks like he fits, and he's. I'm sure he'll be fun. And frankly, The Rock needs a week off, right? Because he's moving, making every other <laughs> damn action movie. So, you know, good. Yeah. But eventually, what we need though, we need The Rock. And John Cena in a movie that would be a lot of fun. I can mean I really would. I think that would be a lot of fun. Lethal Weapon cool. Eight. <laughs> oh Jesus, that's terrifying. But I it could totally so. work. It could totally work. Um, another movie I see being nominated uh, is for a Razzie. Just, I've seen two trailers for this movie, and it already deserves the nomination for worst soundtrack ever. Wow. Uh, Pacific Rim Two. Just because, I, I like I said, there's two trailers, two different songs. I heard a total of four lyrics. Um, it's the same. It, it, all the soundtrack is horrible. It looks like it'd be a good movie. I just hope it has uh, songs with lyrics or better yet, instrumentals. Because oh. the, the songs that I've heard are just horrible. Hopefully they're trailer only, which happens a lot. So I hope so. I really do. Yeah, I'm t- very much looking forward to that film. Very much looking forward to it. Not so much the soundtrack so far. Yeah, uh, here's a, a a movie I am looking forward to. They're finally getting around to making a Black Widow movie. Because <laughs> it took them long enough. Yeah. Uh, now, one of the big things that's come out of this announcement is not that they're making it. We knew they were going to eventually anyway. Because uh, Marvel needs a female-centric hero other than Captain Marvel of which a picture was released this week and she looks kind of eh. Anyway, um, when they make the Black Widow movie, Scarlett Johansson is supposed to be getting a $25 million payday. That's uh, nice. With an extra $6 million in bonuses. Also nice. Yeah. Um, Do you think that this would, that a Black Widow movie would make a better female-centric movie than the Wonder Woman movie did? No. They they need to make the Black Widow movie, and they've needed to make the Black Widow movie since, since Iron Man, Iron Man 2. Two, exactly. Um, and it, it's sad that they're going with Captain Marvel before Black Widow gets a movie. I'm super happy they're making Captain Marvel, but uh, yeah. hello, you established this character like in 1914. It seems like Wonder Woman is a, is is a different kind of character. Uh, despite the fact that she can be a little violent, definitely a better role model <laughs> as far as yeah. as far as as far as that goes. Then and then an assassin who constantly double crosses people throughout her existence as as a character. Um, 
I hope that they kind of go with the dark side to some extent in the Black Widow film. I would actually think it would be really cool if they do a prequel and she's something of a villain. I would love to see. She started out as a villain in the books. Do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to see that story. I want to see Hawkeye chasing after her. And I want to see that story. That would be terrific. And then the sequel. Hopefully Scarlett Johansson won't be 50 by the time they get around to doing that. And 50 is yeah. okay, but if she might be, her bones might be creaking, kind of like Robert Downey Jr. Uh, then they can do, the, you know, the redemption of the Black Widow film, whatever they want to call it. I would love to see that. They probably won't, but I would love to see that. That would be awesome. And Scarlett Johansson is a great freaking actress. She, I, as we talked about before, uh, some roles you have to stretch. She obviously doesn't have to stretch to do the Black Widow, not so far. But this gives her, them the opportunity to really make this, a, literally, they can make this a great movie. Like Logan had the chance to be a great movie. Um, I would love that. I, I hope it's more than than the typical Marvel movie, which is only wildly entertaining and makes me super happy. <laughs> so I'm not going to be really disappointed if they make a typical Marvel movie because they're basically all awesome and fun. But I would hope because this character, they have a chance to do something really interesting and really cool and still make a wildly entertaining movie. So it'd be interesting to see what they do. Now, now that they're finally getting around to it, I hope they right. uh, give it their best effort and really make something cool because they can. They can totally make something very, very interesting. And I'd love to see Jeremy Renner in it as Hawkeye at some point. I think that would be very cool, too. I'll agree. Anyway. Um, I can go two different directions. Do we want to continue with Marvel or move over to DC for a minute? No, let's, let's, let's go with Marvel, and then we'll jump to DC. The only other Marvel news I've got this week regards a massive complaint that has been registered concerning the Black Panther movie. Now, bear with me on this. Really? The complaint is that not a single frame was shot in Africa. The movie was mostly shot in Atlanta and South Korea. The jungle scenes were filmed in Argentina. So much for African pride. Now, the best response to this I have seen so far is, regarding the Star Wars movie, not a single frame was shot in space. Well, um, that's not really... It, it's sorry, kind of that was a it's funny, but it's come back. Yeah, but it's kind of impractical to shoot in space, and obviously they could have filmed in Africa. Um, but at the same time, a lot of the things that they're filming for uh, Wakanda, which is the fictional, it's fictional Donald Trump. Wakanda exactly. is not real. Uh, the fictional country in Africa, the way that country is set up, Africa doesn't look like that. Right, As I, just to say, Africa doesn't have those cliffs, and uh, um, a little different. It's a different setup, so I can totally that see kind of why. That jungle doesn't exist there. Could could they have filmed some in Africa? Sure, and probably would have been cool if they had done that um, to help the economy. But it certainly wouldn't have helped the economy of Wakanda because there is no Wakanda, um, and it's rich enough as it is apparently. It's uh, yeah, Wakanda doesn't need the money. Um, I, I guess I can kind of see the criticism to some point, but that's pretty minor. I mean, it's not like it's set in Botswana or you know, uh, some real location. Right. Which, unlike most of the Marvel things, which are, they're in New York or wherever. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Not a single frame of Ragnarok was filmed on Asgard. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, much happier with the fact that the cast apparently has more than a few black people in it because it should uh Hello. happy that the pre-sale uh, for the tickets are are, in, are amazing uh, the last estimate i heard is they're looking at maybe 120 million opening weekend um yep pretty freaking one strong the, actually, i saw something where one of the actors tried to pre get get a ticket through a yeah. pre-sale and couldn't because it was sold out yeah exactly lupita one of the one of the co stars. So that that's uh, that's very very cool. I'm really looking really looking forward to that movie. That the the previews look so good and previews have lied to us in the past. That's quite true. Ghost in the uh, Shell, you bastards. <laughs> but typically they don't lie to us for Marvel films. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this movie. This movie looks so so cool, and it's coming in just what two and a half weeks. So that sounds about right. Or Yay. two? No, the 12th, I think. Anyway, okay. 
On to DC. Uh, moving on to Wonder Woman, where they're going to be, uh, they're going to start filming uh, for the late 2019 release, uh, starting in a couple of weeks, actually. But uh, the Wonder Woman sequel is going to be the first film production to implement a newly released set of guidelines by the Producers Guild of America. And the purpose of them is to prevent and deal with sexual harassment on film sets. Now, the article I read raised two questions in my mind. Uh, The first one was because of this quote at the end. It follows in the wake of the first Wonder Woman partly being funded by Rat Pack slash Dune Entertainment, whose owner, Brett Radner, uh, was accused of sexual harassment by a number of women, including Ellen Page. Here's my question on that. Where the hell was Ellen Page in the Wonder Woman movie? Uh, nowhere. I'm sure this is from a previous. I, I, I know that she had things against him before, but, you know, if you're talking about Wonder Woman and all of a sudden to throw another actress in, it's kind of like, you know, the, the director of The Godfather had sexual harassment charges brought against him by the Olsen twins. What the? F- no. <laughs> you, I think it's just from the that, prior, just from the prior complaint. I, I get that, but yeah, that that's is kind just of a writing thing that irks me. Um, because the name recognition, I'm sure that's the only reason I they guess. did that. Because putting Gal Gadot's name there would have made too much sense. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, why are they waiting until they start Wonder Woman two to put these in action? That's a really good question. That's, that was my main question. The other one was silly. I'll, I'll take that. But. That's the that's the main question for sure. Um, nice and written, nice symbolic move, but why isn't that in place now for everything? I don't know. Yeah, they didn't say. Um, one, I did want to go back to the salary because that reminds no. me of another story. I just, I just thought about the salary for Scarlett Johansson expected to make twenty five million and et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully, <clears throat> there aren't any stories coming out. Saying, well, Robert Downey Jr., because reportedly he's being paid a, a mere two hundred million for the uh, the Infinity War films, so a hundred million apiece is what is what his salary. What? That's what a report is that came out a while ago. Uh, regardless, I know that he had been paid, I think, seventy five million. Um, so, regardless, he's been paying a, a heck of a lot more money than Scarlett Johansson. And yeah. and I'm sure some people will come out and say, well, why is the guy making so much money and she's only making this? Because because there's a huge difference between their importance to Marvel Studios. It has nothing to do with the roles they're playing. It has everything to do with the money. Robert Downey Jr. was the star of the films that launched Marvel Studios to be successful. It wasn't either of the Hulk films. And I know the first one wasn't Marvel Studios, but the, the the second one was, and that was not a huge financial success. Iron Man was, and that's yeah. almost entirely. Well, okay, I can't say almost entirely because maybe the director had a little bit to do with that, like half of it. And since, but Robert Downey Jr. deserves a huge amount of the credit. Scarlett Johansson, as great as she is in those movies, <clears throat> is not the reason that Marvel Studios worked. Robert Downey Jr. does have a big part of that reason. That's why he got paid more money. It reminds me of the story that came out. The comic Monique it was suggesting everybody um, boycott Netflix because they offered a half a million dollars to do a, a comedy special for Netflix. And she realized that Dave Chappelle and Amy Schumer were offered millions to do specials. She felt slighted like, well, OK, because I'm a black woman, you're paying me much less. Like, okay, but they played a black man much more, and they played a woman much more. Maybe it has more to the fact that people are much more interested in watching those two people than you. I mean, I've seen some of her act on television. She's okay, but I don't think she's even one of the top 50 comics. That's probably why they only only offered you half a million freaking dollars, and you're complaining, and you want people to boycott it because you, know you were treated unfairly? Did. Give me the money. Yeah, it's like you got to be kidding me. You're no, you're not going to get the same money as Dave Chappelle, freak. You've got to be kidding me. Amy Schumer, I don't particularly find funny. I, I, I think Monique is funnier than Amy Schumer. So for that, okay, fine. Make more money than Amy Schumer, but it, it's all about 
ratings expectations. That's what it's about. It has nothing to do with your worth. Same thing as with Scarlett Johansson. I doubt that Scarlett Johansson is going to complain about getting only $25 million, but I'm sure at some point someone will write an article about, oh, this is unjust. Is I, like, I know no. there is some inequality no. going on. but Oh, absolutely. There are other things that go along with it. Absolutely, there's inequality. Like when you talked about the story months ago, the situation on the uh, the TV show of Hawaii Five O, right? You know, and it's like they weren't paid the same. It's like, well, okay, they're not the leads, and then it turned out they were making what one? They're making ten percent. Is what the leads were making? Yeah, it, it was something yeah. ridiculous like that. It's like, okay, I can see. No, they don't deserve maybe the same amount of money, but they sure deserve a hell of a lot more than ten percent. Yeah, there's there's tons of inequality going on. But to say that, oh, you know, you pay Dave Chappelle more is like, duh. The guy hadn't done a comedy show in years. There's probably a little bit of pent-up demand for that, and there's not so much for you. So people need to back off on this whole, oh, this is unjust. It's like, no, sometimes it's simple economics. It's like, you don't deserve that. So calm down with your ridiculous boycott. Take your take your meager half million dollars and do the damn special, and if people tune in next time they'll offer you a crap load of money that's how things work i I don't understand how this woman has been in show business and and not figured that out that people are paid according to their drawing power uh yeah jesus anyway speaking of drawing power uh i think it was two weeks ago boy this is a subject change i mentioned the micronauts tv series (laughs) that is a subject change (laughs) thank you (laughs) The uh, the Hasbro deal that ma- they made with Paramount, um, and how they were supposed to be making shows for Mask and Rom as well. And I wanted to see the Rom series, and both Mask and Rom have been killed. Wow. No one knows why. That's but they odd. are making a lot of things that I don't think need to be made. Uh Back to, this has to be a recurring ses- segment of the show because it happens every week. Remakes, rehashes, and regurgitations. Um, the list this week of just crap that didn't need to be made. Maybe some does. I don't know. Jumanji 2 or 3, I suppose, depending on your point of view. <laughs> uh, they set a new release date for Christmas 2019, which puts it up against Star Wars Episode 9. Brilliant idea. Um, when they made this announcement, I loved that they've put in it, Jumanji is the highest grossing non-Spider-Man Sony film. Yeah. (laughs) Wow, that's specific and weird. It's quite quite specific. Um, Men in Black is coming back, only it's not another sequel, it's a reboot, because, you know, it's only been, what, five, six years since the last one? Well, looking at Spider-Man, I mean, we're on our third reboot already. So Yeah, but they did it right the third time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. they'll... Uh, yeah, that's kind of odd. Um, well, I, I'd, I'd rather see... Actually, I don't really want to see a Men in Black reboot. I was going to say, I'd rather see that than Bright. Ouch. And yet. Um, Robocop. Uh, they're supposed to be doing with that what they're doing with the Halloween movies, which is making a sequel to the original movie and ignoring all the other previous sequels. Good. Including the reboot, I hope. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Um, this one I thought was very interesting. There's a remake of the iconic 1970s classic Superfly, which they said they set the ambitious release date of June 15th, 2018. That's and the pretty, next sentence was, writer Alex Say is working on the script now. That's pretty ambitious if they're just working on the script. Guerrilla film working, filmmaking at its finest. Wow. That's, uh, that's quick. Any yeah, Four months, run. Any comments on the lead? No. Hmm, no casting. Just uh, Alex, I'm guessing it's Say, T-S-E, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, and it's being directed by, and I'm not making this name up either, because I don't think I could, Director X. Ah, I like it. Director X. That's kind of like Racer X from Speed Racer, I yeah, guess. Okay. Um, Director X. Let's see. ABC has picked up the pilot for the female le- le- female led reboot of The Greatest American Hero. 
interested? Mm, maybe. I like the show yeah. a lot. And then at least that's it. at least that's been more than two weeks since uh, that was the first on. So yeah, that was a cool show. Warner Animation has announced that they're creating a computer generated Sousaverse. Mm. Uh, with the first first animated film being The Cat in the Hat. Mm. Where the cat is supposed to wander through all the other Dr. Seuss stories at some point mm. in a computer generated form. Mm. Um, it's not Mike Myers. Yeah. Uh, so that's check, part, check mark number one. The, the last good Dr. Seuss movie I can think of is The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T which came out in the 50s. Uh, uh, hang on a minute. The Grinch animated movie came out after that. Oh, yeah, the Grinch animated movie. But that's the thing. Uh, is it going to be short? Uh, they did not say. Uh, they, they made it. They kind of implied that the Cat in the Hat movie would be a full-length movie direct-to-video. It's kind of what it sounds like because it's going to wander through all the other stories, And which why wouldn't you just do the stories? In multiple and, movies. And, yeah, and make a lot more money and make more interesting, better movies instead of, uh, again, take brilliant source material and let's rework it because we're geniuses. That usually yeah. doesn't work. No. Yeah, I'm not thrilled at all about that. Um, CBS has picked up two pilots, one for Murphy Brown, and they've ordered 13 episodes of that, and they're bringing back Cagney and Lacey, too. <laughs> Technically, um, well, no time like the present. Certainly, I can see why they're bringing those back. Murphy Brown, I can totally see why they're bringing that back. I can back. see working today. Yeah. So, oh, definitely. I mean, that's what Murphy Brown was about when Murphy Brown was on. Um, I had Same cast, about- by the way. If they're, this is going to sound horrible. If they're still living, yeah. I know they lost at least one member. No, I know that. That's that's it's. It's been more than a few weeks since that show was on, too. Cagney and Lacey kind of surprises me a bit, but that was a cool show. I'm curious what the casting will be with Cagney and Lacey, though. I'm waiting for Auto Man to be remade. <laughs> <laughs> that one you may have a little bit of a longer wait. I know. It's very disappointing. Um, did catch the new-to-Netflix thing that's coming up because they change at the beginning of the months, and they wrote out a few of the titles in their alphabetical list. So it came out because the numbers in these movies are spelled out. It came out as oceans, 11 oceans, 13 oceans, 12. So Yoda doing the numbering. He is, (laughs) you you could at least look at that before you put it out. Um, But I'm sorry. I, I, I get giggly when I read this because I think it's very funny. One of the movies that is leaving is a stand-up special from Aziz Ansari. Now, it's not leaving because of the sexual allegations. Although, um, it's just because it's time for it to be rotated out. Now, we talked last week about what Aziz Ansari did on his date that got him in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being filleting his date. The special that's leaving is Aziz Ansari's Dangerously delicious. <laughs> and I just thought that, you know mm. what? It can stay as long as you change the name. No, it should, it should totally <laughs> stay with that name. They should renew it. They should renew it for the year. Um, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. <clears throat> uh, so moving on from that, uh, let's <laughs> see what else do we have this week. The New Mutants movie, which was moved back another 10 months uh, they said they're going to make it the hardest PG-13 movie ever. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Um, they said the big thing, though, is that none of the new mutants will have their costumes. That what That's what makes this superhero movie different. I'm like, have you seen any of the Wolverine movies? He, he has no does not wear his costume in any of them. I'm including the X-Men movies. Never wore it. If, if, if they're proudest of the fact that the characters are not going to wear costumes if that's their big selling point this thing is already in huge trouble i'll agree wow this is what you're hanging your hat on for the success of the films like look we're different we don't have costumes holy wow i i think 
hopefully they are delayed for 10 months because they've just fired everybody involved with it. Because if that's what they think is going to make this work, oh, wow, that's awful. But it totally fits in with basically all of the X-Men work that Fox has done in the past. So yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe they pushed it back 10 months because Marvel is actually getting involved and letting them know, oh, this is how you make movies. I mean, yes, they have done some good work, but for the most part, they've kind of screwed the pooch. So let's see, we're running, running out of time, but I think we can squeeze one review in squeeze. <laughs> okay. Or maybe not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw a movie this week that I was not entirely sure I would like because of the trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm excited. Yeah, see, see, yeah. saving a, saving a big thing for the end. Uh, the trailer showed the, it's a, it's an animated DC movie. Don't let that dissuade you from seeing it. Uh, it showed the art and animation style of the Batman, which was the follow up to the animated series, which came out in like 2004. Wasn't as good in my opinion, mm. but at the same time, it wasn't you know Dexter's Laboratory. <laughs> um. And the DC animated movies are usually much better than that, in my opinion, as far as art and animation goes. It's mm-hmm. not bad, but I wanted better. Now, going into it, I was unfamiliar with the graphic novel this was based on, uh, which is basically uh, Batman set in the early 1900s, Batman versus Jack the Ripper. Which sounds like a cool idea. It does. And the way it's set up, uh, you kind of know going in that we're going to find out who Jack the Ripper really is. <clears throat> and I'm not going to tell you cause that would be a spoiler, but it did come as a surprise to me as to who it was because they cool. really made it look like it's this guy. Yeah. It's this guy. It's him. You know, it's him. You watch it. To, what, it it's, it's him over there. What really? Ooh. Okay. Clever of you. Um, just wasn't expecting the the big plot twist, but it worked. Very happy with it. So nice. if you haven't read the books, don't yet. Watch this first. Um, other there's a lot of other Bat characters in it. Selena Kyle, mm-hmm. Catwoman, is frankly she's a bit of a hoe, but she's a likable character and she's kind of a good guy, so that's fine. Um, several other Bat villains show up if you know their real names. Uh, Like there's a prison fight scene against a big guy named Cyrus Gold, but it's the 19th century. So Cyrus Gold hasn't made his transformation into Solomon Grundy. Ooh, nice. Nifty catch. Um, There's these three scallywag children that are following uh, Batman around periodically. They're not in costume. They're three homeless orphans named Dick, Jason, and Tim. (laughs) Interesting. Which... It could be a groaner reference to uh, to the Robins, which is who they are. Uh, but it was subtle enough that you don't mind. You know, it, it's okay. So overall, really, is this the best DC animated movie? No. Is it better than Batman and Harley Quinn? Hell yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, scribblings I made earlier were better than Batman and Harley. So is Batman Gotham by Gaslight worth a watch? Absolutely. Probably twice, so you can catch everything. I, it, it, it's really good. it's not up to Flashpoint or even uh, what Justice League War I thought was really good. Yeah, but this is still a very good movie. So go get the DVD or watch it on. I'm sure it's gonna be on Netflix soon if it isn't already. Buy it from iTunes. Yeah, I think so it, there. Ooh, I was gonna ask if Harvey Dent is in it, and he is. So he is. Had a there's a lot of people in it. You've got your Commissioner Gordon. You've got another. uh, I don't think Penguin is in it, Mm, but I think there's a couple Riddler references. I think there's a couple of Joker references. Cool. Alfred is in it. Duh. Kind of has to be, I think. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Something to go see. Beautiful. As opposed to the rest of the show, of which I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? I don't have anything else, but it is interesting that Bruce Greenwood plays the voice of Batman in this. Because Sounds he, very good. He played Bob McNamara in The Post, so there you go. Hey, 
The show has now come full circle, meaning it's time to end, and we'll see you next week. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed.